Closing arguments are set for Monday in the trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. Chauvin did not take the stand. And here now with a look back and a look ahead is Georgetown Law lecturer Frederick Lawrence. Great having you on the show again this week. Now when the defense started, they said that Chauvin is innocent because he did what he was trained to do and drugs in George Floyd's system and a heart condition caused his death. In your opinion, how successful were they in proving what they laid out in the opening arguments? Well, first of all, keep in mind the defense never has to prove anything. All they got to do is raise a reasonable doubt. Um, so, and they're very careful. They never promise to prove anything and they don't have to. So as far as that first piece that he followed police practice, um, I think they had some evidence of that, but by and large, that was weak. Even their best witness on that, who said that what he did was appropriate, that witness on cross-examination said the truth is that Mr. Floyd had stopped being responsive uh, after several minutes. So there's no justification for what happened after that. The drugs in the system, my own view is that that's still a weak point, but I think that's their best bet right now. And I, my guess is that when you hear their closings on Monday, that's what they're going to hammer away at, that they're going to try to make the point that, that it was not what Chauvin did that caused the death. But I'd say the same thing today that I've said to you the last two weeks. I think the prosecution did a good job. I think they gave the defense a very steep hill to climb. And at least from what I'm seeing, I don't think the defense was able to climb that hill. Interesting. So as a juror, how do you wade through all of the experts' testimony? Because you do have Chauvin supervisors, colleagues testifying for the prosecution. This was not police training, and it caused Floyd's death. Then you have the defense witnesses saying the opposite, and maybe even exhaust from the police car caused his death. So as a juror, how do you kind of get through this? You'll listen to what the prosecutor will say and the defense lawyer, but the prosecutor will say things like, ladies and gentlemen, use your common sense. Ask yourself, was it a substantial cause? The judge will instruct you. It doesn't have to be the only cause of death. Was it a substantial cause? That's what the prosecution is going to keep leaning on. Um, I think you hear the two different sides uh, in terms of witnesses, but you don't weigh them 50-50 just because there are two sides. Which one makes more sense to you? And I think what's going to really strike home to those jurors is that those were police experts and in some cases former supervisors of Chauvin who said that what he did was not the practice. Everybody knows cops hate to testify against other cops for good reason. They call it the blue wall of silence. They trust each other. They believe in each other. So when a cop comes out and does that about another cop, that's very powerful evidence. Okay, so we know that Chauvin faces three charges, second degree unintentional murder, third degree right. murder, and second degree manslaughter in Floyd's death. What will the jury have to weigh when it comes to choosing whether to acquit or convict based on those charges laid out? Well, the important thing for us to remember, first of all, is one thing they don't have to find. Nothing to do with intent to kill. That's not an issue in this case. They will have to find that it was uh, reckless behavior that led to his death uh, in the case of the manslaughter charge for that second degree uh, uh, murder case, uh, a second degree manslaughter case. They're going to have to um, they're going to have to find that he did he did a crime. He did a felony and the death resulted from that. Did he assault him? Now, if they can find that there was an assault and the death followed, then they have to convict him of that count as well. Okay, last question for you. We have about a minute left. And the, the jury ideally is not supposed to watch the news or read the newspapers. We know they'll be sequestered starting Monday. But do you think the Dante Wright case right there in Minneapolis will have any influence or impact on the jurors as they debate Chauvin's fate? It's not supposed to. It's hard to believe that it doesn't have some impact. This jury was not sequestered. You know, sometimes in highly controversial cases, the juries are sequestered and they're literally kept away from news. In this case, they're home this weekend. They're told over and over again, don't talk to your friends about the case. Don't watch any news. And I'm sure they're not talking about this case. Have they really not seen anything about the other events in Minneapolis? Hard to believe that. Now, an interesting question is which way does that affect them? But again, one would have to think that they're feeling a need to play a role here to see that the law is applied to police officers involved in acts of violence. Frederick Lawrence, always great to have you here breaking down the case for us. We know that the closing arguments come on Monday, then the jury will get the case. Not sure when they'll come up with a verdict, but I'll just ask you to be on standby so that when they do, we can have you here to break that down as well. We'll be happy to be with you. It's an important case and I'm glad to be talking about it with you.